Listen, Sally, you've got to understand. Oh, this is your novel. But it's in German. Mein Kampf. It's not my novel. I thought I should learn something about German politics. Why? You're an American. You know, I've never known a novelist before. Will I be allowed to watch your work? I promise to be incredibly quiet. Uh, Sally, I, I don't think I can work with someone else on the premises. I go out when you're writing. Take long, invigorating walks. In the middle of the night. And uh, there's another thing. Uh, look, I'm not a prude, at least. Are you homosexual in any way? Bobby thinks you are. Bobby? One of the boys at the club. He claims he met you in London. At the Nightingale Bar. Uh... It's possible. It is. <laughs> How fascinating. <laughs> and did you and Bobby have an affair? Did he say that? He implied it. The truth about Bobby is... He, he's not my type. <sighs> I say, am I shocking you talking like this? Oh, <laughs> not a bit. <laughs> but is it true? You're not just saying it, hoping I'll take my bag and run screaming into the night. Oh, the thought had occurred to me. But, uh, no, it's all true. However, it's not the sort of thing you generally go around advertising, is it? I guess not. And isn't that sad? Because I think people are people. I really do, Cliff. Don't you? I don't think you should have to apologize for anything. For example, if I paint my fingernails green, and it happens I do paint them green, <laughs> if someone should ask me why, I say I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty, I reply. So, if someone should ask about you and me one day, you have two alternatives. You can either say, oh, yes, it's true, we're living in delicious sin, or you can simply tell them the truth and say, I met this perfectly marvelous girl in this perfectly wonderful place as I lifted a glass to the start of a marvelous year. Before I knew it, she called on the phone, inviting. Next moment, I was no longer alone, but sat reciting some perfectly beautiful Marvelous girl in my perfectly beautiful room, and we're living together and having a marvelous time. Listen, Sally, it wouldn't work. You're far too distracting. Distracting? No, inspiring. <laughs> she tells me perfectly marvelous tales of a thrilling scandal. Which I'll probably use as a chapter or two in my book. Whoa! And since my stay in Berlin was too false creation, what luck to fall on a fabulous source of stimulation. A perfect and marvelous tool is a perfect agreement to be just as still as a mouse when I'm giving my novel a whirl. Yes, Ivor. See 
everyone in Berlin has a perfectly marvelous roommate. Some people have two people. <laughs> It's New Year's, and what is it now? April. You're second. You're second. You think I do not know what goes on here? Sailors all the time, in, out, in, out. <laughs> God only knows what the neighbors think I have here. A battleship. A <laughs> well, I'm cost one sailor more. I warn you, I call the police. And if I cannot pay the rent? The rent is due each Friday, as always. No sailors. No rent. I move. Move? Move! And what am I supposed to do with your room? Out of the blue, she tells me I move? Is that gratitude for you? Only last week, I gave you another new mattress. Oh, sure, all right, all right. So I will leave the end of the week, since you insist. I insist. You insist. <laughs> get, get, what about the sailors? Sailors? Well, I'm cost. If you wish to continue living here, you must not let me catch you bringing in any more sailors. You understand? Very well. So, it is the same as always. <laughs> no, it is not the same as always. Do you hear? Fräulein Kost, I have put my foot down. Fräulein Kost. 